Hello everyone, my name is Paul Pelloni with the City of Beverly Hills and we have an amazing panel discussion uh, with incredible artists Carol Klimek and Bethany Robert. Interviewing them today will be Martin Durazo. Hello everybody, uh, I'm Martin Durazo and I've uh, had the pleasure of being involved with the Beverly Hills Art Show for some time. I have the honor of talking to, to both Bethany and Carol about their uh, work, which seems to be rooted in abstraction. And oh. Bethany, why don't we? Why don't you lead us through this and just give us a, a brief, you know, talk about your work and your process? I'm really inspired when I, you know, do a new piece of, of work or a body of work by texture and just a, just different uh, striking color combinations. So, for example, this piece was something the colors were inspired by uh, some traveling I did and. Um, I love like creating a lot of chaos with a piece and then starting to compose it, you know, so you have a lot of markings and different elements, but then there's always at the end of the day, a focal point. I love this color blue. It's one of my favorite color blues. So I kind of um, created hues around that, some neutral hues and, and some blues to give it that pop. So this is another one, uh, you know, a lot of white, as you can see, but again, you know, there's always a lot going behind the scenes to create that textured look. So it's a lot of layers actually to achieve this, but um, at the end of the day, I like to really pop those layers with some, you know, fun markings and let those background layers show through, even if they're not at the forefront. It looks like, like you said, that you build up your, your surfaces and uh, that you go ahead and make marks and then you kind of uh, go over them again with the white and then kind of build up to create this almost excavation, visual excavation going on. For a piece like, for example, like this, you, you know, the, you might look at it and say, well, that there's a lot of white going on there, but there's probably between 10 and 15 layers on here. So it's like, like you said, you know, starting with the texture, then creating a ton of different colors, going over, taking off, you know, removing then going over again, as you can see some of the, to the right, some of the black markings and even the, you know, kind of rectangular neutral colored markings those are layers and then, you know, removed and gone over with white. So yeah, it's kind of, like you said, it's like a adding, ex, you know, excavating and adding. So you get the finished product. This is another one of those. Uh, I had this color palette that I was inspired by. And I want to say this was a, a fashion palette that I was studying that was kind of marked in the, the reds and the neutrals and the blacks. And again, I love you know, I love layering with a bunch of different mediums and then finally popping it with some oil bars and uh, letting some of those markings in the background come through, but kind of creating a wash over it too. Okay, you, so. you indicated that you're interested in fashion. Uh, yeah. they, these are kind of like, in my mind, fall colors. Is, it, is there any designer that, that pops into your head that, that you think about when you're making your work or that you're influenced by? There's not really one particular designer that um, I follow necessarily, but you know, I do like a lot of African textiles, mm -hmm. a lot of the colors and the, you know, the, uh, I love like geometric shapes. So you'll see a lot of geometric shapes in my work. And I realized I'm like, okay, there's a lot of African textiles that I love that have those like really neat geometric shapes. And so that kind of comes, you know, pops into my head as well. Mm -hmm. This looks like a, a departure from, from the previous one. Why don't you talk to us about this? <laughs> this one was really inspired by just bold colors. So as you can see in the name, Bold Love, um, this was like a mix of bright, bold colors with white. Can you tell us a little bit about your process? Because I, I see that you did something here and I, I wanna know how you kind of created these lines and what was oh, your yeah. approach? What did you do different here from the other yeah. ones? So this one I actually created, uh, even though it's on here horizontally, I created this one actually vertically uh, with love going down on the right hand side. And this one I just started out with a lot of different layers of color and, um, you know, go over it with some white. And then what I did is if you can kind of look at the painting, I built a lot of the color blocking. So like on the left corner, left lower corner, you'll see a lot of those different hues of that same color, but different hues of it. And I did that along the painting. So in the middle, it's got the reds and the pinks and the top left, it's got a lot of the greens and different hues of that. So, so a lot of what I do is I'll paint in, in a, in, let's say a color like red or pink or whatever, and I'll do layers of washes with a pastel and acrylic, and then I'll even go over it and define it with a, a 
uh, bold pastel. I was making reference to how, you know, you can tell, like you did mention that you started this uh, as a vertical painting and it, as part of the tradition of abstraction, you, you see that the, that the paint is dripping and yeah. by, by then now making it a horizontal orientation, it, it's kind of a, a fun, you know, oh, yeah. horizontal That's mark rather than the traditional drip. Oh, this is fantastic. Is this, what is this on? This is actually on canvas. This was a big one. This was a 48 by 60 or 62. Yeah. Um, and this one is on canvas again, a ton of layers. And as you can see, some of the richness in the blues and the neutrals is after several layers really popping with blending oils and, uh, um, oil bar to finish fantastic. it. So, okay. Yeah. It's, is some of it just on like the raw gesso? Is that part of it being exposed or did you actually go over the canvas again with a white paint or do you just- Yeah, uh... I actually, in this in this particular case, um, I actually did go over it again with white. I don't think I left too much of the natural uh, or just the gesso, but yeah, it's, I think it was actually layers where then I painted white even over it and then covered some of the, like you kind of see on the bottom where the blue is, there's layers of circles underneath and, um, right. but yeah, every once in a while, you, to your point, I'll- Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we're here with Carol. Carol, if you could, you know, talk to us, I, I, I will follow your lead. Okay. Um, very much like uh, Bethany, I work in layers and um, most of mine are oil, with a mixture of oil pastel and um, charcoal and graphite. Usually it's whatever I grab. It gets <laughs> the piece one right. way or can, another. Can I ask you what, what thinning agents or mediums do you use with your oil? Um, what I work with is a water soluble oil. So oh. I've been doing it since it came on the market. Okay. And I loved it from the beginning because I have trouble with the uh, solvents with the uh, traditional oil, which I started with. If I work with baby oil, I get one effect. If I work with water, I get a different effect. And if I work with linseed oil, I have a total different effect. And I work with all three, depending on what I want in the end. People think that uh, a water soluble oil, that it's more like a watercolor. And right, it's or not, acrylic. it takes the same amount of time to dry as uh, a traditional oil. It smells like a tr traditional, traditional oil. oil. The only thing is you get to clean your brushes with water. Nice. You know, it's That's young. nice. <laughs> I love this piece. It is one of my absolute favorites. And there's about 35 layers of paint on I this piece that. to build it all. And um, because I work the way I do and all the layering, I'm working on four to five pieces at a time and working on paper at the same time. If you'll notice on the last piece, you'll see some weavings in it. I paint a lot, right down in the center right and the right. middle left on the paper or canvas. And I decide after a period of time whether I like it or not. And I cut them in strips, big strips, skinny strips, whatever. And in the evening, I'll sit there and weave them, some in smaller pieces, some in huge pieces and then incorporate them into pieces at a later point in time. There are shapes that I use in all of my work and it's part of my whole approach to my art. I used to be a representational artist for the bulk of my life. And like other people journal every day, I painted every day. And that was my um, interpretation of what my experience was and how I interpreted the world around me. These abstractions, when I first first saw them, I thought it, they said the word loud. It's, it's one of those conversations I've had over the years about abstraction, uh, is that they're, it's just one of those human, human instincts to try to find something in the abstraction. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I don't like titling my work because when I, produce it when I'm working it means something totally different to me and mm -hmm. when I'm painting it and I'm done with it that's a total that's a release for me and if I titled it for what it really meant when I was doing it no one would yeah. buy it so I prefer them to come and 
create their own story. Bring, bring their experience Absolutely. to your work. These are all on Canvas. Okay, let's talk about this one since it has a title, even though you said you don't like titles. <laughs> <That's sleep laughs> I like the symbology and up until maybe about two years ago, a lot of my shapes and markings were behind and you saw them come through the layers like um, Bethany had talked about. You saw them behind because I would scrape off a lot of the images at, in the different layers and let some come through and others stay behind. Um, right. This was one of the uh, pieces when I started pulling them forward and having them more um, in your face. It's, what is the relationship to, to the title Sleepwalking? It's how I felt that day when I was taking it. I, I felt like I was just not involved. Like semi-conscious? In a way, yeah. Because I, 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 I think about this. I'm outside looking in and going through motions. We have a question, and, and this is uh, guy, for both of you, or either one of you can, can uh, chime in on it. Uh, are there genres of music that that uh, influence your work or your practice? Absolutely. For me, I think, and I relate jazz to my work, and it's a certain mix that actually makes the right balance of music. In this piece, okay. I was listening to Motown that Sunday morning. Okay. This morning, I turned on, I think it was Martha and the Vandals, and I was listening to the music and painting, and it just came out. How about you, Bethany? Bethany, I know that you, you're also involved in music yourself. Oh yeah, I'm, I love music. I've uh, been singing my whole life, so that's a huge part of who I am. So yeah, music definitely goes hand in hand with my art. It's kind of like, Carol, um, it kind of depends on the mood I'm in. I like to say international because sometimes I'm, I'm a big time, so I love salsa. So I love to dance in salsa. So if I'm in that kind of mood, I'll throw in some salsa. I'll listen to some Afrobeat jazz r&b and you know i love gospel too so it just kind of depends let's see do do either one of you have a recollection as, as to when you started gravitating towards abstract work i mean it's not i don't know it's not something that i mean especially during a formal education when we're younger we're, mm -hmm. we're taught how to you know draw and, and render uh, the best we can and then this idea of abstraction seems to be the next level once we've already been engaged in artwork. So maybe you, if you guys could take a turn talking about that. I can tell you for me, it was in the eighties when um, I would pour huge canvases and there was a, a feeling inside of me that, oh, I have to, I have to still prove that I could draw. <laughs> prove that I knew how to do my representational work. So I would draw the, I would pour these massive canvases and uh -huh. then I would come in and paint these very detailed images inside of it. Mm -hmm. And it was where I had to prove to myself that I could do it because I was so right. afraid of losing that capability. And then it was years before I let go of it. What about you, Bethany? Well, I think for me, you know, I think back just, I've always had, you know, just a love for art. And then when I went to college, uh, I actually studied um, two-dimensional and three-dimensional design. And then that led me to go more like the graphic design direction. And when I um, went to another university, my, my teacher challenged me. She said, I did an independent study. She says, go out, you know, uh, the semester to do 30 pieces. I want you to study the earth's surfaces, the walls, and come recreate that texture. And so at the end of the semester, I had 30 pieces using, you know, all these different mediums I've never even used. It was like an exploratory semester. So I started using ink and pastel and, you know, acrylic and all that, creating really all these cool textures. And that's when I think you know, I really acquired a love for abstract. That's where she's like, I think you'd be good at textiles. So that kind of led me into going, okay, I love abstract work. I'm going to bring kind of my composition and design background to learn how to create chaos and then bring it into a focal point in a composed piece, you know, but I just love what abstract allows. It allows you to, you know, 
experiment with different things and but yet have a kind of like how I compose music it's like you're all over the place but then you bring it in and it there's harmony there you know you're right yeah if uh, I'm gonna pose this question to both both of you uh let's say you were given the opportunity to to be in a show with two other painters mm -hmm. of your choice mm -hmm. any painter any any time uh who would you want to be basically in that context with i for me um i think it would be judith godwin and the other would be a friend who i think is a phenomenal artist, Jana Grover is her name. And um, I think she's exceptional. She has two sets of series. She does uh, um, animals and then she does um, people and the state of people. And I think those would be the two I would select. Right on. I do see the, converse, uh, the connection and the conversation that your work does have with, with Judith's work. Yeah. Uh, very nice, strong, bold marks. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you, Bethany? Who would you choose well, two other artists to have this amazing three-person show? I would say if I would love to have done a show with uh, Basquiat and with Twombly. Oh, I that's think fantastic. Be, that's that a good conversation. A yeah. That'd be a fun one. Um, do either one of you have any questions for me? I was told you were a gallery or are a gallerist. How do you like that? Where do you find time <laughs> to paint? I had a gallery called Miller Durazzo uh, that started out more, it was basically an artist run experimental project that began when, when I started grad school at UCLA. And uh, in the mid nineties, a lot of, the, we were experiencing a, an economic down, downturn and a lot of uh, commercial spaces had closed. And I think, you know, a lot of art students do this. They, they try to create opportunities for themselves and their friends to uh, show work. And right around that time, that, that was the spirit of LA. There, there was a vacant space near Pico and Robertson uh, that we would be able to get a, a hold of for a short time if we rehabilitated it. Mm. And so we did I, what I thought was going to be maybe six months, a project that was going to be six months turned into six years just because there was a need for it. And as galleries started to get a footing again, and a lot of the people that we showed with went on to go show with, with uh, bigger, more established galleries, which, which was the purpose of that place. Mm -hmm. And in terms of speaking to the time constraints, well, I was in school and like I said, I had a, a partner and, uh, we gave opportunities to, to aspiring, uh, not only artists, but curators, you know, people mm -hmm. that were coming out of graduate programs in art history and that wanted to try their hand at curating. We gave them opportunities. And so it was just kind of a come together DIY opportunity. So it wasn't like a big fancy mm -hmm. uh, space. At the time that we decided to close, it was because of other responsibilities. It was time. Well, so, Martin, I'd love to ask a, a quick question question you know I got a chance to look you know through uh your your portfolio and your work and just you know a lot of your accomplishments and it's very impressive what at the core like inspires the work that you do you know what what uh, is it that you know gives I, you all that I'd like to say it's the fleeting moment um I've been having this conversation with with you know my students my friends my family uh how the only thing in, in our human condition that is real is right now, this moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, the past starts to fall apart. We try to remember as best as we can, mm -hmm. but even 10 minutes ago starts to just kind of go away. And then the future, we can predict, plan, do all these things, uh, but it's just a concept. And so I'm, I'm very interested in, in these fleeting moments that that are the present. So when I started working like with, with fluorescence and abstractions, I, I was actually making reference to nightclub lighting, you know, the, this idea of reverie and, and uh, almost like going the other way where abstraction really was representation. 
So think of like when you're in a nightclub and there's 10 different colors flashing and you close your eyes and there's still streaks that exist there. Yeah. That's what I try to capture it in, in abstraction and then uh, attribute those emotions and ideas to, to people and places and, and you try to um, try to almost pay tribute to those that have come before us and uh, present, you know, those that, that will follow us. From the city of Beverly Hills, we want to give a huge thank you to Carol, Bethany, and Martin for being with us today. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye. Great chatting with you.